right, and here we are again with another episode of Did You Know? A 12-part series of interesting stories that will benefit all of South Africans. You can simply subscribe to our YouTube channel, Did You Know? MGT Live, and voila, you will learn much about our country, its people, and its uniqueness. And today certainly is no exception. In fact, I've been so blown over by the enthusiasm and the knowledge of this person that I'm going to have as my guest today, that I can't wait to learn more. But, you know, what does one do if you're proven totally wrong? I always thought that accountants are a rather, what shall I say, not the soul of the party, but boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Rob Milne is a fit, young at heart accountant, but he's also a tourist guide and a writer with a passion for history and the outdoors that can take you on a journey that you never expected lies right in front of your door. But what will to be to our immeasurable advantage today is that he is an explorer, an explorer with an insatiable curiosity to find and follow the traces of the ancient people of Southern Africa. Rob Milne, explorer with a funny hat, welcome to our show. Thank you, Jolene. I, I look forward to it. Well, we'll get the people to join this party with the content as the centerpiece here. So we will answer some of your questions, did you know? But before that, I just wanted to know, you grew up in urban Johannesburg. So, so where did this explorer thing come from? Well, it wasn't quite urban. I grew up in Bryanston. Mm -hmm. And at that time, in the 50s, uh, there was only two Todd roads. And one of them was Grosvenor Road. And so it was very rural, and uh, we used to go down the road to the Sky River, and I remember shooting at Buck with my pellet gun. <laughs> That's how rural it was. Wow. <laughs> and that in Johannesburg. But in your explorations, you also survived two lightning strikes. Um, what influenced that experience to what you're going to tell us today? Well, I think um, it removed fear from me, so I wasn't afraid to go into Anything. I wasn't afraid of snakes or cats or, or anything because uh, I, I knew I was somehow protected mm -hmm. and it, it also kind of helped give me a third eye because after the second strike, I started noticing things in the felt that other people didn't. Ah, and so you discovered more than just the normal birds and the bees. Yes, I did, <laughs> very definitely. <laughs> well, did you know what a gong rock is? Well, some years ago, I thought I was the only person in the world that ever discovered the only gong rock in the world. But Rob, you obviously know better. So can you tell us just briefly before we look at the video, video what exactly is this gong rock thing? Okay, it's a very ancient musical instrument, if you look at it that way. And it started when ancient man heard noises coming out of caves and he was fascinated and he wanted to, he wondered what was behind the rocks, what was underneath the rocks. And so he started hammering a small rock, bigger rock. And he found that some rocks rang with a beautiful note. And you will say, see later in my video that um, they actually mounted these rocks on little forms and they hollowed them to make the sound travel even further. And further than that, they, they actually discovered that there would be a number of sounds that they could produce, and, and that you'll see in the video. Let's have a look at this video because I really find it very, very interesting. Good. <laughs> I'm going to show you a selection of gong or ringing rocks. That means that when certain rocks are struck, they issue a wonderful musical note. Uh, this one is a huge natural dolmen and it has an interesting engraving of a giant sun which is in some cultures represents the creator. It's quite a fascinating sight um, near a very richly painted rock shelter and another smaller ringing or gong rock. Ancient people selected certain rocks which issued a clear ringing sound when struck. And this became one way of making music or simply creating a signal 
which could be heard a very long distance away. Here's an interesting ringing rock. It's been hollowed on the underside and it rests on a huge boulder, which has also been hollowed to amplify the sound. Very heavy rock uh, on the top. I wonder who carried that and put that one in place. But it also has a nice three tone ringing sound when struck. The upper rock is balanced on one side on a Middle Stone Age hand axe, which you can see here in the foreground. Uh, this is the hand axe, and this is part of the upper rock. And this may give some indication on when this ringing rock was erected and first used. So that would be between 20,000 years ago and 200,000 years ago. So there we have it. A carefully crafted and mounted ringing or gong rock with some very weathered and faded engravings on it. And this is what the rock sounds like when it's rung. Here's an interesting ringing rock, which some of you may have seen quite often. They were taken out of Iron Age sites by some people and put underneath a dripping tap in the garden. But what few people know is that when the lower grindstone went out of tune and the, the ancient people defined it going out of tune as being that it was smooth, too smooth to hold grain. And they would use a special rock, usually a greenish garnet, uh, to revitalize uh, the small pit, uh, pits in the rock. Uh, and they would never use anything like a piece of metal. And if you strike this rock, you will actually hear a beautiful ringing sound when it's off the ground. Here's another smallish ringing rock, and it's about a meter wide by half a meter long. And here you can see that the ancient people have indicated each of the three notes. So this is the place where you strike each of those curious symbols, and it issues a different note at each place. Now, I don't know what this ancient engraving means, but it certainly looks like ancient hieroglyphic or even Phoenician writing. As I mentioned, ringing rocks are often associated with other forms of rock art and even rock slides. And this is a magnificent example where you see these lovely eland probably painted a few thousand years ago by sand people. It's very high up on a cliff and uh, difficult to get to, which has helped protect the site. And here's a rock slide. Uh, they're normally found in Central Africa, but this one is in South Africa. And here we have a place of immense entertainment. You can see that lovely slide smooth and uh, I've been down it a few times and it's quite fast and it's on a steep slope. 
So here we have a place of diverse entertainment. We have ringing rocks, ancient paintings, ancient engravings, and of course, at night, we have the stars in the clear sky. Far away, here's a rock that looks like a dolmen, but it's actually a ringing rock that dominates the whole immediate landscape and can be heard very clearly from a big distance away. And finally, here's an unusual ringing rock, which, um, as you can see, has been carefully shaped and the rock behind it shaped and it actually mirrors the mountains in the distance. So it was a very particular place that they put this rock and modified it in a very different way. Well, Rob, I've got three questions for you. The last one that you mentioned here was put at a particular place. Um, so did they select the places for specific reasons, you think? Yes, they did. Um, and in fact, um, I've got other places where they've actually shaped the stones. And I don't even know if these are ringing rocks. I have to go back there. But they've actually shaped the stone to mirror a mountain in the background precisely. And it's not once, it's not twice. There are many sites I can take you to where this happened. That's absolutely amazing. Um, then the other question, uh, are all of these dong rocks or gong rocks rather, are they in South Africa? Yes. And how would one look for them? How would one find them? <laughs> just be, well, just be Rob. <laughs> well, we, we have to, you know, before we make it available for tourism, we have to uh, make an agreement with the landowner have to protect the site in terms of conservation laws and ensure that the rocks don't get damaged. So the ones I've shown you are not really accessible um, unless you do a lot of walking and a lot of experimenting with little rocks on big rocks. Uh, but, but how did you find them? Did you just stumble onto them or did you have a specific goal in mind that you specifically went to look for a gong rock in that specific area? No, I, I stumbled on them and I've got a good example. Um, the one that I showed uh, that I was ringing it. Now that's the moment I discovered it. I thought it, with the loophole up in the top, I thought it was an anglo Boer wolf fort. And I went up and I was totally disappointed. And then I thought, this is, rock is unusual. And I just happened to pick up a rock and I start, and it was a beautiful resonant sound you could probably hear for kilometers. Yes. So, did, did you say that you could hear them for kilometers? Was that not sometimes also a warning sign or something? Yes, it could have been. And at that particular site, uh, there's an Iron Age crawl, uh, probably very early. And on that crawl, they have got an upright stone that actually points to where the Gong Rock is on the far hill. And that's about a kilometer away. Wow, that's interesting. Because the one that I saw was in the vicinity of, of Kimberley. Um, and it didn't look as if it was balanced in any way, but you pointed to quite a few rocks that were balancing. Yes, balanced and shaped. Balanced and shaped. So do those two go together? Is there no natural lying rock? I mean, that is a gong rock just lying there? Well, I think there is, um, you know, but I was taken up with these rocks and that's probably why I discovered they were ringing rocks. Okay. And do, are they, have they always got some, some um, uh, paintings or, or engravings on them? Or not, uh, not always, uh, not always. And I only had a brief time for site recording at this one particular rock. And I noticed as I was leaving that there was like an engraved crocodile, which was very weathered. And so I have to go back there and do some more recording. Because there was, at the ones that I saw in the area of Kimberley, there definitely was also a similar sign to the one that you showed on the first rock, sort of looking, it looks like a, a sun or something, which, what did you say, what was the meaning of it? Uh, the, it means the creator in a lot of the um, early people. And it, uh -huh. it symbolizes the, the numeral one. So... Uh -huh. One has to dive into all of this and read Credo Mutua and all the authorities, Brenda Sullivan, etc. And then suddenly we start putting this whole story together. Well, that's, that was absolutely fascinating because I, saw, I recognized that specific sign because, like I said, you know, I saw it before. But this is very, very interesting. Um, 
but we also we also want to have a look at your secret africa or hear about your secret africa series um we're just privileged to have a part of the first video what made you start the secrets of africa well you know i've been gathering secrets of africa for many years and been wanting to write a book but you know as accountants accounting always comes first because <laughs> you have to balance the balance sheet so i thought the best way of showcasing and probably writing the book at the same time is to show you the secret place. If people are intrigued enough, I promise you I will finish the book Please. and I will show more and more. Please, because this is intriguing as it is. So let's not waste any time. Let's have a look at the secrets of Africa, which is only, like I said, a part of the first video. This is an ancient staircase at Great Zimbabwe, which leads from the main ruin area up to the Acropolis. Was it built by ancient Africans, ancient Phoenicians, early gold miners? Was it a fort, a temple, or a prehistoric city built near the ancient gold mines in the area? I will try to answer these questions in my upcoming series. We have a number of unknown and equally mysterious ruins in South Africa as well and I'm going to show you one of them. Here are two huge structures built on an impossibly steep slope near the top of a mountain using giant slabs of granite. As you can see here, where they were cut and there's numerous other rocks uh, nearby where they cut these massive slabs and the statues on top of the second structure. Let's take a closer look at the first one. It's made of seven carefully leveled layers of hewn rock slabs and stands 6.9 meters high. Uh, that's nearly 22 feet. And it is crowned with the shape of the head, which is reminiscent of the Sphinx in Gaza. The far side has a few deep and ancient symbols engraved right at the top of the slab. Is there any record of the structure which is almost impossible to reach? There's a very interesting chamber which has been built behind the main structure and the only comment I can find the only clue was written by a mining commissioner David McKay Wilson who worked in the area before the main reef was discovered in Johannesburg in the early 1880s gold prospectors reported finding an ancient relic high up on a mountain they said and I quote it was a stone coffin or tomb cut out of the solid rock on a ledge 2,000 feet above the plain. The grave, if such it is, is fitted with a massive stone lid or cover engraved with characters which the discoverers said looked very like what they had seen described as Phoenician. However, the commissioner remarked that the average miner is too matter-of-fact to be impressed by such evidence of antiquity. Consequently, this tomb has remained unopened. No one feeling sufficient interest to run the risk of toiling on a ledge where only a vulture could feel at home. But here you see that the so-called tomb must have been opened later on. So here's a small video clip of our first approach to the structure and you get an idea of the impossible steep slope and how difficult it is to That's navigate. Nice huh? like shade, yeah. See, it's like it's like whole complex. Yeah. It looks like it's been carefully built, eh? Yeah. And that little knoppy on the top. I mean, the detail on that stone is amazing. 
Dit is gebouwd. And here you see how these small rocks have been used to balance these huge slabs, making them totally level and totally uniform. Here are some very curious symbols on the other side of the structure, which have been carved in the rock in antiquity. Some are younger or more recent than others. That one looks like a snake. But I have still yet to decode what this Here is the other structure. And you can see it's totally different and more massive than the first. It stands over five meters high. That's 17 feet. Two massive granite boulders have been carefully dressed or trimmed and placed on two upright boulders. A magnificent piece of engineering and almost impossible on this slope and in this day and age. And on the top, you'll see two carved statues. Here's a close up of the two ancient statues. The one in front looks rather like a tortoise and it peers over the edge of the structure. The one resting on it is clearly a lion. You can see the snout and the shape of the, the head and the eye. So they're huge and they're very carefully balanced. And they're both nearly two meters long. And they point to a prominent cliff in the distant mountains. Uh, this is where the sun from this site is observed rising at the summer solstice. And here you see the statues in perspective with an archaeology student proudly showing them off while standing right on the edge of the giant structure. Oh, wow. So, I mean, there is so much that we just do not know and so much that we haven't seen or just passed by. Um, do you in, know anything more about the tomb? I know you said that there's very little research done about that, but have you subsequently maybe found out something about the tomb? Nothing whatsoever. Um, and um, I'm, I still need to go back and do more detailed photographs, more detailed site recordings, so that I can find more helpful um, information on the rock engravings and maybe decode what they mean. Um, you would appreciate that that small video clip, that was the moment of discovery, if you like. And uh, we were just absolutely gobsmacked. So you um, also just stumbled upon this one? No, I'd spotted it and, and my third been telling me for about four years that there was something up there that was very unusual. And we managed to get a lift on a tractor um, partially up up this big hill and we actually ended up running out of water uh, we had to get back it was for night was coming we had to get back about five kilometers down a very very steep mountain and uh, it's not not easy to go to how did people get there i mean this is amazing maybe they lived there or something on the mountain top i would think they did i i would think they did i found other evidence of um, early structures up there that I didn't have time to investigate. But it was very much, if you like, I call it a temple. It was very much a, a special sacred place. That's the feeling I get walking through it. But I mean, not only the feeling, but I mean, the way that these rocks were hewn and, and put together, I mean, this is absolutely fascinating. I mean, with today's technology, you can't do it. Yeah, Even exactly. if you could get a tractor up that road, you, you can't do it. This is absolutely wow. It's mind boggling. Well, if this doesn't whet your appetite for more, um, I don't know what to do with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rob's series, Secret Africa, you can find that on which address? Where can you find that, Rob? Well, we can, 
put it on MTT Live. Uh, um, you can get to rob at robmilne.com. That's my usual email. And I have a website, robmilne.com. And I will let people know where they can find the series. So the Milne is spelled M-I-L-N-E, right? Yes. Um, it was never Milner, thank goodness. Otherwise, uh, I would be the scourge of my Afrikaans friends in the anglo dual War. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, I really look forward to more of your talk. It really, really intrigued me. And it just goes to show that we should open our eyes when we walk around and drive around and just be inquisitive like you are, an explorer. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed this. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks for having me on your show. Thank you.